from suburban Cincinnati, Ohio, Cleves, Ohio to be exact, and Edgewater Park, this is the IHRA Summer Nationals. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Bob Jenkins, along with Larry Newber. Drag racing has come a long way in the last few years, but a lot of advancement has been made just in the past year. Bob, that's an understatement. When you look at the charts of the top ET times in history of IHRA, both divisions, Pro Stock and Pro Funny, you'll discover that 90% of those top 50 times, both divisions, have occurred in the last 90 days. They've been very fast this year. The speeds may be just a little slower here this weekend because of the tremendous heat and humidity that the drivers will have to put up with. Makes it tough on the engines, but I believe it's going to make the competition better. Those guys who've been streaking away way out front, they're going to be reeled back into the field. Could be exciting. Well, they don't call this Edgewater for nothing. We're near a river, and besides that, this is one of the shortest tracks that IHRA competes on. With more on that, let's go to the third member of our broadcast team today, Marty Reed. They don't call this Edgewater Park Dragway for nothing. We're at the outrun area, and just 70 feet from the end of the track, you can see is the Miami River. You've got two choices if you run into problems. You can try and slide into this sand trap, which hopefully will stop you before you get to the river. Or your second choice as you're coming flying down the track at over 240 miles an hour is to hit the bean field off to the left side. That's exactly what happened to Greg Lewis during qualifying over 240 miles an hour when the car literally exploded into flames. The parachutes burned off the back. He had nowhere to go except either into the sand pit or over into the bean field. He chose the bean field as the car melted around him. And Marty, we're happy to report that other than the inhaling of the burning fiberglass, Greg Lewis is okay. Now, back to today's action. Who are the favorites in today's activity? Well, first you start thinking about pro stock, and uh, one name comes to your mind, Lee Shepard. For the 12th time in a row, Lee Shepard has been the fast qualifier. He has been invincible also this year already in IHRA. Billy Meyer, quick time in pro funny car. He was the hottest driver at one time on the circuit, slowed down a little bit, but he may be in the running for championship here this day. Mark Oswald, he performs in front of the home crowd fans. He is the points leader. He would like to win here to extend that points lead. And we will be back to begin our eliminations in just a moment as we cover the IHRA Summer Nationals from Cleves, Ohio. in the northwestern suburbs of Cincinnati, Ohio. Cleves and the IHRA Summer Nationals were ready to bring you the quarter-final round of the Pro Funny Car Division. Here are the qualifiers. Billy Meyer with the top qualifying ET at 5.795. Bernstein, Beetle, Poley, Oswald, Head, McEwen, and Southern. And here is one of the competitors in the first race, Raymond Beetle, the 40-year-old from Dallas, Texas, in the Schlitz Blue Max Ford Mustang. Of the last IHRA meet at Milan, Michigan is being called the most incredible event ever. Lots and lots of new track records. As a matter of fact, the ET and speed records in both divisions were set and changed at Milan. And his opponent is Tom McEwen, the mongoose from Fountain Valley, California, 47-year-old driver in the Coors Chevrolet Corvette. And mongoose is fresh off of his best personal ET ever at Milan. He went 5.8. Now, we commented earlier, the speeds and time to be off just a little bit here because of the very harsh atmospheric conditions as far as the breathing capabilities of the engines go. Earlier this year, Tom McEwen won his first victory on the IHRA circuit in seven years with a victory at the Winter Nationals in Darlington, South Carolina. Right now, Tom the Mongoose McEwen is sixth in IHRA points. McEwen in the far lane and Raymond Beetle in the near lane. Remember that Beatles also recently announced this will be his last year. He'd like to go out with a big bang. He is 92 and 36 in final round eliminations, and that's tops among funny car drivers. It's going to be close, Bob. And it looked like that Raymond Beetle put on a spurt there at the end and beat McEwen. There's the ET 573, 245.23 miles an hour. And we'll see who has the advantage off the line here. Well, the tree up in the upper right-hand corner, the light on the left refers to the far lane, which in this case, of course, would have been McEwen. You can see that Beetle really got the advantage quite early on. He just held on. He sustained it through the top end. So Raymond Beetle in the Schlitz Blue Max Mustang moves into the semifinal round with a victory over Tom McEwen. 
Well, of course, the Pro Funny Car Division, probably the most popular in IHRA competition, and Marty Reed is down with a closer examination of the cars that compete in this division. The Candies and Hughes team is based out of Houma, Louisiana, but driver Mark Oswald is uh, coming home, so to speak. Mark, you uh, originally came from Cincinnati. This is a return for you. Yeah, I did. You know, it's, I've always lived here all my life, but this is the first time I've really had an opportunity to race here in the professional category. A very difficult track, especially uh, at the outrun area. Uh, yeah, it, it, the track looks like it's really coming around good. It just needs a volume of cars to be run on it, and I think it's going to be fine. Let's talk a little bit about your car right now. You're the world record holder in speed, over 262 miles an hour. You're making gobs of power. Explain a little bit about this 2,500 horsepower machine that floats like a bullet down the track. Well, the old Milwaukee Pontiac Trans Am, what it is is a 125 inch long tubular chrome molly chassis. Up front, you have 19 gallons of nitromethane that the motor will use about 10 of. The rest is used for front end ballast. A little further back, You've got the fuel pump, which is the main heart of the motor, a 2,500 horsepower motor, which is 500 cubic inch. That's manufactured by Keith Black Racing in California. Behind that, you have the transmission, which is a planetary two-speed with a reverser, which allows us to do a longer burnout and, and be able to return to the starting line. And it helps in the traction department to where we can really, you know, get the super fast elapsed times. And then, of course, the fiberglass aerodynamic body made to streamline the machine right there's a lot of aerodynamics on this pontiac trans am here that we've worked on this year that that has a big thing to do with the speed record that we set a month ago well listen everybody in cincinnati's pulling for you good luck this weekend yeah i need it thank you let's go back upstairs to bob and larry all right thank you marty your action uh, about to begin here on the drag strip once again as the car of jim head is moved into position jim is a 30 year old from columbus ohio this is the jim head racing dodge daytona here's what happened in an earlier round larry well he's up against ricky bowie and watch that now he's got the win here in his hip pocket but he obviously has some problems there as head comes across the line he's had a major problem with the engine and it is a major problem there is jim head uh slowing down after that run, and there is the problem to be exact. Uh, you can see the, the uh, head is completely uh, torn away there by a malfunction in the engine. So one, when one of these powerful drag racing engines explodes, it's just dramatic, and head is one of only three people who has ever gone more than 260 miles per hour. You know that they turn the horsepower out. But the crew has done the job, and Jim Head is ready to go again. He is eighth in IHRA points at this point, has been racing for 15 years, but this is his first season behind the wheel of a pro funny car. He has been competing the past four years in the pro dragster division, which was eliminated this year by IHRA because of falling number of machines. And his opponent is Kenny Bernstein, the 39-year-old from Dallas, Texas, in the Budweiser King Ford Tempo. Yeah, head got a really tall order. This guy is tough. He's been around a long time, and he's feeling very confident and very racy here this weekend. Head apparently still does not have that car completely back together, and they're a little late coming up to the line, Bob. Well, they have a certain uh, amount of time to make it to the staging area. And Jim doesn't even get off the line as Kenny Bernstein goes down by himself. I don't know whether they had problems uh, with the car or whether he just chose not to run. But at any rate, Kenny Bernstein wins over Jim Head. Well, you saw one of Kenny's crew members come up and motion to him to move up to the line at the staging time at a lap. And Kenny, in somewhat of a gentleman nature there, was holding back a little bit, giving Head's crew a chance to perhaps finish their repairs. But it was time to go, and the crew member told Kenny to take off, and the tree lit up. Bernstein, who won the Milan race that we saw earlier on ESPN, moves into the semifinal category. We'll be back with more Pro Funny Car quarterfinal elimination in a moment. Back to the Pro Summer Nationals in Cleves, Ohio, and we continue with our quarterfinal elimination in the Pro Funny Car division. And this race matches Billy Meyer, the 30-year-old from Waco, Texas, in the 7-Eleven Chiefs Auto Park Ford Mustang against Mark Oswald from Cincinnati, Ohio. Billy Meyer has more IHRA career victories than any other driver in his age. First national event victory came back in 1974. Well, this should be a good one. These two guys are going head-to-head -head right now for the points championship. By the way, Jim Head's problem that last round 
just a $2 water cap, preventing it from going to the barrel part upwards to a value of $25,000 to $30,000 in the engine dollar parts kept him out of the running. But back to this race, this could be a tremendous one, Bob. As Marty told you earlier, Mark Oswald is a uh, hometown boy from Cincinnati, Ohio, and he holds the IHRA miles per hour record of 262.39 miles an hour. That, of course, set at Milan, Michigan, back in July of this year. There's Billy Meyer getting his car ready to go. Well, Meyer was really on a hot streak about a month ago. He has started out slow in each of the last two seasons, but has come on very strong as the weather has gotten hot. He's number one in dollars won in IHRA for 1984 with over $72,000 already pocketed, and that's in just four events. The old Milwaukee Candies and Hughes 1984 Pontiac Trans Am in the near lane with Mark Oswald, the far lane, Billy Meyer from Waco, Texas. Quarter final round elimination pro funny cars. victory. They've already lost one engine in qualifying here this weekend. And I'll tell you, unless that was just a lot of steam, or maybe something up in the top end of the engine that let go, they may have just lost their second engine in about 24 hours. Here it comes across the line. The chute is not yet popped. He's going for victory. He pops the chute, and right after the chute came out, kaplooey! A lot of smoke, and now we're getting a preliminary report that it does look like it's an engine. Top luck for Mark Oswald. His crew has a job to do now to get that engine out and replaced with another one. But it did look like the engine blew on the car just as he crossed the finish line. Burnouts are something that occur before every race. Here's Marty Reed. The burnout is done for several reasons. First off, to heat up the tires. These composition tires are made to run hot. Also, you want to lay down a new, fresh, hot piece of rubber. You can see how much rubber is actually built up here on the track. And what they're doing is backing up right over the very hot part of the track that they just laid down themselves. The burnout's very important to a good start at a drag race. Let's go back upstairs. All right, as we get ready for our next race, it's going to be Dale Poldy against Gary Southern. Yeah, Paul D will be in the right lane. You see the bright orange and yellow car. He's been very fast recently. Paul D, as a matter of fact, has the three quickest to last times in IHRA history, and all three of them were set up that last meet of Milan. He's down in the 5.6 area. And a record 5.645. Dale Paul D from Granada Hills, California. He is 34 years of age and is in that bright red Pontiac Trans Am, the Miller Warrior. And Californian Gary Southern, meanwhile, has made his first finals of this season, 1984. He does rank 10th in points, so this will be an opportunity for him to hold on to that top 10 position in the point stand. He'd really like to show well here against one of the real veterans and one of the real standout stars in the drag race. Gary Southern from Los Angeles, California. Again, he'll be in the far lane against Dale Colby in the Miller Warrior. Poldy has twice won the uh, IHRA World Championship, both in 1977 and in 1982. Yeah, Bob, and he keeps getting into the finals, but he hasn't been able to win yet in 1984. His real big nemesis in the last couple of years has been Kenny Bernstein, but he'll be going up against Southern here. And I'm sure that uh, Poldy is pretty happy to look over to his left and see something other than a big red car over there. <laughs> so Gary Southern moving his car into position set for our next race in these quarterfinals here at Cleves, Ohio in the Pro Summer Nationals. Gary Southern, far lane, Dale Poldy, near lane. Southern with a good hole shot. Oh, something happening on Gary Southern's car. It looked like it may have been the blower. Bob, there's a big hole in the windshield. He does seem to be okay, though he obviously does have control of the car. And he wins the race, 247.93 miles an hour, an ET of 6.092.
But a blower may have gone on that car and shatter the windshield. Is he? Yeah, I, yeah he's okay. He's angry. A little angry. Okay. Like. Yeah, you can see that descriptive, disgusting move of the throwing of the gloves that so many race drivers do when something that happened that yeah, just kind of ruffles their feathers a little bit. Here is We can determine exactly what happened here. Oh, he's moving up the line, and there you can see that explosion when the blower goes away. Well, let's go down to Marty Reed, who's at the uh, finish area, to find out exactly what happened with this car. Gary, you okay? Yeah. We won. It's a hell of an expense. Let's wait till you get out of here. Hard way to win, but we won. You got the parts to, to get it back yeah. together? Oh, yeah. She'll be up there next round. So uh, an awful lot of work going to be done in the Captain Crazy Gary Southern Pits. And notice those safety straps that hold the blower on. They very possibly could have prevented serious injury to Gary Southern. Well, we'll change the visions here and be back with the quarterfinal eliminations in Pro Stock. Back at Edgewater Sports Park, just outside of Cincinnati, Ohio, for the IHRA Summer Nationals. And we move now to quarterfinal competition in Pro Stock. Here are the qualifiers. They've been led by Lee Shepard with a 7.5808 ET. Smith, Hill, Peppers, Alderman, Ruth, Ewing, and Lapone behind him. And Pro Stock has also been very fast in 1984. Roy Hill at Milan got above 189 miles per hour. And Charlie Peppers is another guy who has been doing very well this year. He's had an opportunity to be fast also. And this was an earlier round with Peppers against Marsh. And you can see how he got way out of shape. Well, what happened in this particular case is that the Canadian, the guy right there in the white car, Alan Marsh, ended up being disqualified because he crossed the yellow line. He saw Peppers get on the binders when he saw Marsh getting out of shape. He simply got out of the accelerator because he knew that once Alan Marsh touched the yellow line, as he does there once, he's still out of control. He comes back and touches a second time that Alan has been disqualified, so there was no sense for Charlie Peppers out of Georgia to uh, punish the car. So that's how Charlie Peppers has reached the quarterfinals. His opponent, Joe Lapone Jr. from Newtown Square, Pennsylvania, 28 years old, and the Palmer Brothers Pontiac Firebird near lane. Peppers a good hole shot on the outside lane, and it looks like that Charlie Peppers is going to win, but a spurt of speed there from Lapone at the end of the strip, and it was a close race after all. And Lapone really did come on strong. He's a protege of one of the legendary names of drag racing, Bill Grumpy Jenkins, and boy, in the top end of the strip, Lapone almost was able to come back and nip off Peppers. So the 1984 fourth Thunderbird of Charlie Peppers from Auburn, Georgia, moves into the semifinal round. Sometimes a drag race is actually three races within one, and this one may well have been one of those. Oh, look how close that was. There's the ET 7.704, and we move on to the next race. This features Billy Ewing from Snellville, Georgia, against Roy Hill from Sophia, North Carolina. You got to say that Hill, that man right there, is the favorite in this particular matchup. Hill, of course, the man who is very closely aligned with the Petty family. The Stockers, as usual, they're ready to go in a big hurry. Good start. Hull doesn't get away at the line. No foul. Side by side. It's going to be another close one. Oh, my goodness. I don't know, Bob. I didn't pick that one up visually. It Hill looks like a Roy. Yeah, Roy Hill did pull out the win. 182.187.695 the ET, but it was a good one. Well, Hill has not won since 1981 in the Winter Nationals. Here's a replay on that. You can see Hill barreling down the near lane, the right-hand side, as they enter the trap area. A little bit of top-end speed kicking in there for Roy Hill, and he comes out the victor here in one of his quarterfinal matches. Meanwhile, there is a lot of activity back in the pit area. Gary Southern's crew making repairs on that car. You recall that Gary blew a blower on that car at the end of his run, and there's a lot of activity, frantic activity, as a matter of fact, trying to get that car ready for the semifinals. Next up will be Ricky Smith, and his opponent will be Lou Tavilio from North Carolina. We're both a couple of North Carolina drivers. Ricky Smith, a man who's been so fast so many times in drag racing competition, and 
If there is somebody standing there in the wings getting ready to take away the crown from Lee Shepard, it just might be Ricky Smith. Abilio with a hole shot, it looks like, but Smith pours it on in the near lane. Ricky Smith defeats Tavilio. Well, Ricky has never been the top qualifier in 1984. He goes 171 miles per hour here today. Not as fast as the speed we've seen in the past. The recent weeks is good enough to win here, but twice Ricky Smith has had the top speed in me. Next up is Lee Shepard, the guy who has won the last five IHRA championships for this year and won last year, and his opponent will be Daryl Alderman. Remember at Milan, Alderman almost had him beat. Something went wrong with the machine. He was unable to bring home the victory. Alderman would like to be as fast as he was one meet ago. The Christmas tree will watch it count down. Uh-oh. And Alderman, red light. Alderman in the far lane has red light, and Lee Shepard will advance. Tough luck for Alderman. Well, Darrell, who came in ranked third in points, there he is in the bright yellow Camaro. Probably a little over anxious. He knew he performed well the last time. When you go against the man who everybody is shooting for, sometimes when you go after that competitive edge, you step over the edge, and that's what he did here at Edgewater Park. And a good run, but got off the line just a little too soon. Red lighted, and Lee Shepard has advanced into the semifinals. There he is, Lee Shepard. And Shepard goes 181 miles per hour. That's important because he's trying to maintain his lane selection option by uh, running faster than people goes up against in subsequent rounds. All right, and in just a moment, we'll have activity involving the jet cars. Stay with us on ESPN. Nationals in Cleves, Ohio. Lee Shepard's crew is working on his tires. What they're doing is actually connecting the rim to the tire. The tires have a tendency to actually move off of the rim when they're in their burnouts. Well, have you ever wanted to drive down a drag strip at over 250 miles an hour? Well, you may get the opportunity right here. Instead of telling you what a pro stock car is all about, we thought we'd give you a ride. And the man we're going to ride with today is number two in the point standings and one of the favorites here at the Summer Nationals, Ricky Smith. And Ricky, there are a lot of things going on in that cockpit when you're going down this trip. Well, there's a lot of confusion in there, especially when a car gets a little out of shape. Uh, you know, you're trying to drive with one hand running 180 mile an hour, and you're trying to change gears four times. So. You know, you imagine driving down a highway with one hand, changing four gears 180 mile an hour in, in seven seconds. That takes a little time to do that. <laughs> Take us through the process from the time you enter the bleach box to the time you stage and then right on down the track. Okay, well, we get back in the water, and that's the bleach box, which is just pure water. We, we do that to get the tires good and hot, so it'll spin free back there and get the tires real good and hot. We come out with it and you know, let the tire really bite hard as we come out of the water, and we know it's dry that way. And then we normally do a little shirt behind the line, just a little drop the clutch behind the line to make sure that everything's right, the tires dry, and the car's going to do right. And then we just basically go on up and, and try to run our own race from there and stage up and leave and try to get a decent light. The, the name of this game is getting off the starting line. That's the, that's the biggest, that's the way I've won races in the years to pass, and that's the way I've, I've been doing. It is one thrilling ride. I would say it is. Oh, it really is. And these guys make it look so easy, but it's really potentially a very dangerous sport because you get the slightest bit out of control. You can be in deep trouble. Well, the noise begins to build as we move away from the pro funny cars and the pro stock cars for just a moment to bring you an exhibition involving the jet cars. And the noise is absolutely incredible here. You're talking Mount St. Helen type horsepower. And I'll tell you, the horsepower these guys turn out, well, it would challenge any moon counter potion, that's for sure. It's a spectacular sight whenever the jet cars warm up. They're kicking in the afterburner, which superheats the jet engine. That's really where all the power comes from in these cars. It's a very spectacular sight, and obviously one place you don't want to be when the jet cars are warming up is, oh, like right off their back bumper. How about that? <laughs> I would say so. So it's simply against Rosberg here in this jet car exhibition that's done at all the IHRA events. It's really spectacular for the uh, spectators. These guys are brave, too, I want to tell you. Now, when the jet cars take off, they start slow at first because they don't have that torque that a piston-engine-driven car will have. But at the top end of the strip, boy, do they kick in and pick up the horsepower, and most of it comes from the last, say, eighth of a mile of this run.
just like a jet airplane down the runway. Yeah, it sounds pretty much like it, doesn't it? But it is a thrilling sight, and it must be something to drive one of these vehicles. You get right alongside of the engine. Dick Rosberg, the winner of our jet car exhibition. There's the ET 6.33 speed, 257.14 miles an hour. We'll be back to resume our pro stock eliminations in a moment in Cleves, Ohio. This is Larry Newber and Marty Reed back at Cleves, Ohio for the Summer Nationals. We're ready for the semifinal round in pro stock eliminator, and it's Smith against Peppers in this first race. And the second race will be Shepard against Hill. Charlie Peppers, by the way, there in the red T-Bird from Auburn, Georgia. He has never made it to a final. He's got to win one more race here in the Cincinnati area today to get to the final. Boy, he must be hungry. He must want to do that badly. He's never gotten to the final duo. Boy, he is up against some stiff competition. Ricky Smith, second in IHRA points. Qualifying time was 7.725 seconds. He lost at Milan, Michigan to Shepard. He lost at Bristol to Shepard. He lost at Rockingham to Shepard. And he lost to Alderman in the finals, semifinals of the Winter Nationals in Darlington. Here he is in the semifinals here at Cleves, Ohio against Charlie Peppers. And you know, Smith matched Roy Hill's 189 mile per hour lap at Milan. And you know that Smith, that car is capable of going as fast as any car on the circuit. Smith in the white car, Peppers in the red. Oh, Charlie's up in the air a long time. He's a little bit out of shape. T-Bird against T-Bird. It is Ricky Smith, but Charlie Peppers has red-lighted. So Ricky Smith wins at 181.4 and moves into the finals. Here is the red light from Charlie Peppers. Watch the top of your screen. The screen coming down. You can oh, see yeah. vividly Charlie Peppers is away from the line long before the light gets down to the bottom of the tree. He stayed with it, though. The car stood up a long time. He was a little bit out of shape. You know, when the front wheels are up in the air for a long time, obviously there's a tendency to move that steering wheel just a little bit. And if you're not pointed perfectly straight, when you hit the ground, you can get in trouble. Meanwhile, back in the pit area, the old Milwaukee team is changing engines. Here's Marty with Paul Candy. Two rounds of racing so far, and the Candies and Hughes old Milwaukee race team has already gone through two motors. Paul Candy's car owner standing with me, and Paul, you are down to your last mount. Oh, well, we had a little misfortune. We broke a valve lifter on the first, which is very odd, and, and we went in with a complete brand new engine, and we had to run Billy Myers, who's uh, right on our backs on the, uh, on the points lead. So we couldn't very well back off the, and detune the thing to go out and make a run. So we just left things as we knew were, and we were a little too lean on two cylinders and burned a piston and a piece of trash went down and got in a barren and scarred the crank. I don't think we'll have this problem with the other engine, but uh, we got to go up against Beetle. He's our teammate, and he's about as tough as there is. You're going to have to sell a lot of studs to pay for this race. Oh, yeah, but you know how the guys say it doesn't get any better than this, so we keep loading them up and shooting them at them. You've got it. Down here in the Candies and Hughes old Milwaukee pit, let's go back upstairs. <laughs> All right, Paul Candies with the Mark Oswald crew doing some work back in the pit area. As we move to the next race in the semifinal round, Lee Shepard against Roy Hill. Roy Hill, the other 189 mile per hour driver of 1984. That's the all time record speed for pro stock. And there is the main man. There is the man who sits on the throne, Lee Shepard, the number one qualifier again for the umpteenth time. He has won all four of the previous IHRA meets in 1984. Can he be beaten? Certainly Hill's car can go fast enough, but you've got to race and be successful the entire length of this quarter mile. You've got to get out of the hole, you've got to sustain an early speed, and then have something left on the top end to power through the track. It's going to be close, I think, Bob. Boy, they are neck and neck. Here they come. Oh! Boy, that's too close to call. Who knows at this point? Shepard and Hill. Shepard is the winner. Oh, what a disappointment for Hill. I mean, I'm sure he's happy that he did so well against Shepard. There is Shepard at 183 miles per hour. We have not seen very many 180 mile per hour plus runs. As a matter of fact, Shepard is the only guy to go 183 today. He's done it twice now. Look how close it's oh, going to be. It was close all the way down and by a bumper. It is Lee Shepard defeating Roy Hill. And I'll tell you something. At the start, you see that Hill has the advantage 
He's about a bumper ahead at this point, and he was coming on very strong at the end. Actually, Shepard got beat at the beginning and the end of that run, but he won the middle section. Lee Shepard against Smith, and the finals will be back for the semifinals in Pro Funny Cars after these. Now for the Pro Funny Cars semifinals here at the Summer Nationals. And in the first one, it'll be Raymond Beadle against Mark Oswald. And in the second race, Kenny Bernstein against Gary Southern. Now the funny car divisions of both NHRA and IHRA have been very competitive in recent weeks. In the last five NHRA meets, for instance, eight different drivers have gone to the finals. And in IHRA, the last two meets, four different drivers to the finals. Looks like we're going to double up a little bit at the Stroh Summer Nationals here as a couple of people who are still in it for the finals have been in finals in the last couple of meets, but it's been very competitive, and it really is wide open. It is anybody's championship. Here is Mark Oswald in the far lane in the old Milwaukee Pontiac Trans Am. Remember, they have gone through two engines so far this weekend, have just put a new one in, so there is a bit of a question mark here. Oswald is the points leader. He took over from Billy Meyer. He'd like to hold on to that through the remainder of this season. $75,000 bonus for the winner of the points championship at the end of the rainbow. There is Raymond Beadle. He attended Texas Tech University and majored in agriculture. And he's, uh, you might say, digging up the road, digging up the drag ships as he has done for about the past decade with a regular basis. It's the Blue Max Mustang in the near lane against the Candies and Hughes 1984 Pontiac Trans Am in the far lane. Semi-finals for a funny card. You saw Kenny Bernstein's mount being rolled up to the line or getting close to the staging area. A big change from Milan when Kenny was late getting out. Both off the line at the same time. Oswald a little out of shape, but Oswald wins. Wow, that was a hairy run for Mark. I didn't think there was any way about halfway down the strip that he was going to be able to hold on and win. 240 miles per hour. Not a particularly good run for either of the drivers, but Oswald, despite having problems keeping on course and keeping pointed straight ahead, is able to nose out Beetle. And come, look at Oswald. At this point, he's behind, and all of a sudden, talk about an afterburner. Obviously, Pistons don't have one, but boy, if they did, that one kicked in. Mark Oswald now in the finals as Raymond Beadle is defeated. Nice friendly handshake there though by Mark. There's the paddock area of the old Milwaukee crew. Let's go to Marty Reed. Meanwhile over in Ricky Smith's pits, everybody knows what the job at hand is. They've got to find six one hundredths of a second and Ricky you know that you do not have lane choice. Yeah that's the problem right now. We don't have lane choice. Uh, what happened was the uh, second round eliminations, uh, my car got real loose in third gear in the right lane. I, I had to get out of it and get back in it. I beat the guy, but I got a real slow time. So at that, I lost lane choice in the semifinals. And then I didn't get a chance to get in the left lane, which Shepard did, and now he's got lane choice on me in the finals. What are you going to do to try and pick up that 600? Well, we're changing some stuff in the car, the gear, and you know, a few things to try to confiscate for the slickness over there. But uh, all we do is just give it our best. Keep your eye on the tree. It's one of those situations where Ricky Smith knows he's going to have to cut a good light. Let's go back to Bob and Larry. Well, you can bet that Ricky Smith would like nothing more than to knock off Lee Shepard and end this string here this weekend. Meanwhile, we're back to the pro funny cars. Kenny Bernstein, the first over 260 miles an hour, ready to go in this one against Gary Southern. Yeah, Gary Southern is another one who would really like to cut it close at the tree. Southern, at least on paper, doesn't have much of a chance in this race, but lots of things happen when you get as close to the top as the semifinal round. He has not been above 247, 248 miles per hour. There he is, he qualified eight. He has not been above 248 miles per hour here in the finals, nor has he gone as fast ET as Bernstein has in a couple of Kenny's races. So Southern right now has really got to be scratching his head through that helmet. Remember also, they spent a lot of time repairing this car. You never know exactly what you have. There's no chance for a practice run in the middle of the semifinals and the finals when you're getting up this close to the top. Bernstein, meanwhile, the Budweiser King, one of a handful of drivers to use an onboard computer in the car, and the car has also undergone extensive wind tunnel testing. Here we are. Winner to the final. Bernstein is off. Sitting there, Bob. Southern doesn't even get off the line. Bernstein goes to the Bernstein final. Bernstein's shoot is broken. Kenny Bernstein, and there comes the reserve shoot. I think he's going to be okay. 
Wow. A close moment there. That uh, preliminary shoot just failed to open, and he had to rely on his secondary shoot. Oh, what an unusual run. First of all, Gary Southern sitting at the line with a three pop. Bernstein completes the run. He crosses the line, and that primary shoot, that black shoot, came out. And it was just a bunch of ribbons. Obviously slowed him down very little, but the experience there of Kenny Bernstein showing no panic. He simply pulled the button on the reserve shoot, and Bernstein got her hunkered down. Well, Gary Southern did finally make it down the quarter mile, but for some reason he just froze when the green light came on. Well, there you see it. So Bernstein into the finals. Let's get more on this shoot situation from Marty. Kenny Bernstein had a parachute malfunction, and Kenny, uh, good thing you had a second backup. Well, I'm telling you, that's what we carry two for. I haven't been open both of them at the same time because it hits so hard on the car. It's really hard on you, but uh, I hit the first one, and it just fell apart for some reason and I went right for the spare and luckily we did because the track here's a little short so we're okay everything else okay inside everything's fine the car ran plenty good and it was nice and safe and uh, it was pretty smooth it didn't quiver this time so I feel pretty good about it Kenny Bernstein in his second straight final at the IHRA national event here at the summer nationals let's go back to Bob and Larry classic confrontations coming up in pro stock Shepard against Smith funny cars it's Oswald against Bernstein we'll be back for those in a moment Finals in the pro stock category, but before we do, let's go to the pro funny cars pits. Here's Marty. If you were with us for our race coverage at Milan, Michigan, you remember that after the semifinals, Kenny Bernstein's Budweiser King crew was busily taking out one motor and putting in another one. They almost didn't make it to the final. As you can see, just general maintenance this time, and as Dale Armstrong said, this one's a cakewalk compared to Milan. So it's beginning to be evening here in Cleves, Ohio, as we get set for the finals. And in the pro stock category, it's Lee Shepard against Ricky Smith. Indeed, a classic confrontation. Here's Ricky in the number two Parkway Ford Thunderbird. And he goes up against the Muhammad Ali, currently of drag racing, the man with the big knockout punch, Lee Shepard. Lee Shepard has the 16 fastest ETs in history. He's won all four of the IHR meet, IHRA meets in 1984. He was the fast qualifier again here this week in the Cincinnati area. And he's the man to beat. Both with a good start. Oh, this could be close. Smith has got a chance. Hit it on the line. Too close to call at this point. It could be a win by Ricky Smith. Yes, it is. Ricky Smith has stopped the streak. Lee Shepard's streak of five is broken. Smith with a 183.297.6 ET. Oh, he is, oh, you can tell he's a happy guy. I was about to say he must be very pleased. Let's look at it again. Watch the tree now. When the light goes green, you can take off. Both of them cutting it very yeah. close, I might add. I'll tell you, they left just a little bit before the green light went on, but the electric eye didn't catch him. He got a couple of inches there of leeway. Down through the quarter mile, side by side, and much too oh. close. Oh, you can see it there visually on the stop action. But if you are watching either in person or in live time, there's no way to call it. Congratulations to Ricky Smith. Let's see how he feels. Yeah. Let's step in here with the winner, Ricky Smith, the first time in uh, five races this year that this man's been beaten in the final, and you finally did it. <sighs> Thank Lord. That's all I know to say, you know. Lee, I'm just, you know, I'm... <laughs> I couldn't believe it. You know, I like to lost the second round. You know, something bad. My car got loose when I run Lee that time. You know, but it stayed straight. And good Lord is with me. And I want to thank Goodyear and Motorcraft a lot. You know, they uh, they sticking with me. And uh, I'm really looking for a big year next year. Congratulations. Thank you a lot. A big win for Ricky Smith in Pro Stock here at the Summer Nationals. And now we set up for the Funny Car Finals. Kenny Bernstein against Mark Oswald, the hometown boy from Cincinnati, Ohio. First in IHRA points so far this year. Up against Kenny Bernstein, and this should be a tremendous show, too. Bernstein comes in with a lot of confidence. Oswald has been doing well recently. He's had engine problems, however, here this week. And remember, they are on their third block. Oswald, 31 years of age, in the old Milwaukee Candies and Juice 1984 Pontiac Trans Am. At Milan, Michigan, he lost in the second round to Dale Poldy, but he's made it to the finals here in Cleve. And this is the biggest event ever here on the banks of the Great Miami River, Stroh's Summer Nationals. 
Oswald would really like to do well in front of his hometown fans. A lot of famous people from this area, President Taft, Roy Rogers, Rogers Staubach, Pete Rose, and Oswald would hope that someday he could be listed with them. Oswald Far Lane and Bernstein Near Lane. Mark Oswald with a good hole shot, it looks like, but Bernstein is going to win. Kenny Bernstein picks up his second IHRA championship in a row. And look at the crew. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, winning never gets old, does it? Certainly never gets easy either, but every time you win, it's such an accomplishment. It's so difficult to do in any level or any form of motorsports that it really is a moment of true jubilation. 255.68 miles an hour. The ET was 5.80. Kenny really does an excellent job of driving in this particular matchup. Watch him come out of the line. It's pretty close at this point. He stays with it throughout the entirety of that quarter mile but it was really at the top end where Bernstein came through. Just one heck of a drag race. Oh, it was. Uh, ESPN must be our lucky TV station. <laughs> That's two in a row for us. Uh, Dale Armstrong, Bruce Balsink, Jeff Scarp, Wayne Cooley, and Pete Duhart, my crew, and Dale, of course, the crew chief who tuned her in today every run, and boy, I'm, my hat's off to him. Was this one easier than Milan as far as the thrashing was concerned? As far as the thrashing, yeah, because we didn't have to replace the motor, as you know, Marty, in the between the final there, but uh, none of them are easy. When Mark Oswald and Candy's News are good friends, we always have races like that, and all day long it's tough. It's, these cars are tough today. Congratulations again. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, a little bit of money has changed hands here this weekend. The Funny Car winner collects $12,000, Pro Stock Champion $3,000 plus contingencies. We're just a little slower than usual, as we predicted. However, it didn't mean any less excitement as far as the racing is concerned. Absolutely not. You look ahead towards the rest of the year. Kenny Bernstein has now thrust himself into the heat of the battle for the championship, the points championship in Pro Funny Car. And even though Shepard may win Pro Stock, Looks like some other drivers are now capable of beating him on the strip. And let's go down to Marty Reed for his final thoughts on today's activity here at the Summer Nationals. Today's race was a matter of adjustment. The crews fighting not only the humidity, the track conditions, but also sometimes the lack of spare parts. For Kenny Bernstein, two in the row. And for Ricky Smith, probably the biggest upset of the season on the IHRA circuit, breaking Lee Shepard's record. So we thank you for joining us here at the Summer Nationals. For Marty Reed and for Larry Newber, this is Bob Jenkins saying so long from Cleves, Ohio.